One short day in the Emerald City. Hi everybody, I'm Delandis and welcome to Delandis World. One short day in the Emerald City. Actually, two and a half years in the Emerald City for me. Okay, I wore this really, really hot sweater for you guys under these lights here. Just so that you guys, so I can show my wicked spirit. Um, I wanted to tell you guys about my journey in the show Wicked. I was in the third company, which was the Chicago production of Wicked. So if you guys have seen the show, you know that Wicked is a very, very special show. Especially if you grew up watching The Wizard of Oz and knowing the story of Dorothy and the Wicked Witch and... It was very, very special, not only a special show, but it was very special to be a part of that production. They came to audition for the first national tour. Um, I was called in for the audition and I remember being very, very set on being here in LA um, and making everything work here in LA. So, although I wasn't very interested in leaving LA at the time, I wanted the opportunity because you always take these opportunities. Anytime that an opportunity to audition for a show like Wicked comes up, what do you do? You take it, right? So I took this opportunity and I went in. I danced well. I remember seeing Wayne Salento. I remember from New York. So it was great seeing Wayne again. Um, and I remember just kind of being very chill on the audition. I remember just kind of celebrating this one other guy who ended up getting the show celebrating this other guy watching him dance and being like dude you're good you know this is this is for you you know um and i ended up getting a call back the very next day and i was like okay maybe i really really should focus on this audition because at this point they like me so we went into the audition and it was it was great and after this happened um i didn't hear anything for a while so casting called and they wanted to know if I would be in New York anytime soon and the answer to that was no but from that call I knew that they were interested in something so fast forward even more the opportunity came up again and they wanted to see me in New York but this time it was like we want to see you on the very next day and I remember uh, calling my agent or my agent calling me and I'm like what am I gonna do what should I do what should I do I want this opportunity but can you imagine what the tickets would be to try to travel to New York the very next day. Maybe like a month and a half had gone by or so. And I was talking to my agent and I remember uh, asking about the opportunity in Wicked and, and, and if they had called back or if they're interested. And and uh, we were just talking about and having a conversation. So the very next day my agent called me and she asked, do you remember that conversation that we had yesterday about Wicked? <laughs> And I said, yeah. And she said, well, they just called and they want to offer you Chicago. And I was like, it's going to Chicago too? And she said, yeah, they wanted to offer you um, a track in the show. And I was so excited. Now, it was kind of like, um, it was kind of like a bittersweet moment for me because I loved LA so much and I was not ready to leave LA. But also too, you have this amazing, this amazing opportunity, you don't turn things like that down. You don't say no to opportunities like that. So I told myself, okay, I'm going to do Wicked, but I'm going for only six months. Well, six months, <laughs> six months turned into two and a half years. Um, but yeah, this was, I was on my Wicked journey. I remember getting to New York for rehearsals, which was exciting. We were going to rehearse in New York for one month. I'm always a bit nervous when I walk into the room for the first time with a bunch of people that will become my family. You know, um, you walk into this room and you have people checking you out, who is this person? And mind you, I have not lived in New York for a while, so I did not know a lot of these people. So I walk into a room and I feel like a stranger because I am. And, um, and one thing that I love to do is I love to observe. I love to look at personalities. I love to see, you know, who, who I need to look out for or who will I gel with or who will I, I need to, to show a little extra attention to. You know, you know you're, just, you're just trying to figure people out um, in these situations. I remember just being 
so hard on myself from the very beginning thinking like, okay, um, I'm going into this show. I know that this show is the featured dancer track. I know that this show has a solo or this track has a solo in it and I need to be at my absolute best. So when I go into these situations, I tend to be a little quiet. I tend to stay to myself a little bit because it's my, it, it's the way that I focus. It's my coping, I guess, mechanism to, to, to being, you know, trying to be the absolute best and trying to focus on what it is I need to do. And I've done these big shows before, so you know that when you walk into these rooms, you have to deliver. They expect the very absolute best from the jump. There is no working into it. There is no, you know, trying to figure it out. Yeah, we are figuring this stuff out, but you have to express and show that talent right away. I walked into this room knowing that I had something to prove, um, and especially being the only male black ensemble member, African-American. There was, I think, uh, yeah, there was an African-American, uh, male and female, Dione and myself. And, um, it was a journey. We learned this show so quickly. I mean, they came in, they just threw choreography at us and it was like, okay, okay, trying to keep up. Then we're singing and we're dancing and we're, we're trying to learn the book. And, and, uh, it was, it was very intimidating. I had not been in New York for a while or been on stage for a while. And I was in LA doing mostly, you know, television work. And so when you're kind of thrown into stage again and you really have to deliver, you don't get a second take. <laughs> you don't get a second take. It's there. Um, but, you know, it was a fun experience. I was on this journey. We're making money. We're doing our thing. I'm in New York again for a month. And then we moved to Chicago. Now, through all of the training that we do as dancers and performers, they never really teach you what it's going to be like to, to fit in. They never tell you this because... You know, I think all of that stuff just comes from experience. I remember having to learn to, how can I say this? Having to learn how to deal with personalities that in the real world that I would not necessarily deal with. And um, it was tough, it was tough. But at the end of the day, when you are putting on a show, you are a family and families fight, families have arguments families don't get along. I will tell you that being in this show was definitely a learning experience for me. Um, I had an exercise in patience. <laughs> Although I wasn't always patient, you know, I had an exercise in patience. Um, I had to really learn to, at some points, do this and roll with the punches, roll with the flow. Even though it was very tough for me sometimes to stay quiet, because I am opinionated. I do have, um, I love, I'm very expressive. I love to, to challenge sometimes. Um, but I will tell you that, you know, it, it was an experience, you know, it wasn't always the best experience for me, but the most important thing and the, the, the most important thing or the most important job that I had being in Wicked was to deliver my performance for this audience. And I loved every moment. I, you know, when you do these big shows like this and you fall in love with simple things like your costumes. I remember, and I'll get back to that, but I remember when I left the show, one of the biggest things that I missed was, were my costumes. I loved my costumes. Um, and six months turned into two and a half years for me. And again, you know, I had some great moments in the show um, and I had some not so great moments in the show, meaning that, you know, when you're dealing with different people's behaviors, different people's personalities, it's tough. Um, and that's just true. That's the real deal. And also to them dealing with me, we're all we're all a part of this whole community that left our homes. And so we're kind of forced to kind of get in there and interact. Um, my love, my biggest love in this show was being on that stage every single night. And mind you, which I'll never do again, because I did not miss that show for a year and a half of being in that show. And um, 
my voice took me away from it because I had major vocal cord surgery from overuse. And so it took me away from the show for about a month and I had to come back into the show quickly um, because uh, a person that was doing my track got injured so they wanted me to come back into the show and I agreed. Um, did not sing for a while but I came back into the show and it was home. It was home. It was where I wanted to be. and. I think through all of my experiences, even all of the downs that I've had in the show, um, and most of, those, most of those times were because you're dealing with um, castmates that you may not get along with, um, and this is real deal, real truth, being on that stage was something magical. Walking outside that stage door knowing that you made someone feel a certain way, that you made someone feel good about themselves, when you have a show like Wicked that's about being comfortable in your own skin and being who you are and being accepted for who you are. Um, it was very, it, it was so wonderful to meet people who loved what you did or what you do. And I know that I was able to change lives. I know that people would look at me and say, hey, that's what I wanna do. And not just me, our whole company. I mean, remember, we are a team. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting people like Morgan Freeman, who came to the show and came backstage and he spoke to me and was so excited about my performance and told me how great of a dancer that I was. And uh, that's always wonderful when you have a legend like Morgan Freeman telling you how great of a performance you gave um, and how great of a performance he felt the cast gave. That was, uh, that was one of the highlights of my experiences in Wicked, you know, meeting celebrities that would come in and appreciate you and appreciate your job. We spent our whole lives watching them on television and watching movies and now that person is watching you perform and enjoying and kind of sitting back just to be entertained. So that was always exciting, meeting people of that caliber, seeing your show, watching you perform. Um, what else can I say about Wicked? So yeah, two and a half years in Wicked and I decided that it was time to move on and um, my experience had, had run its course and sometimes you just have to say goodbye. So I gave notice, did not know how hard it would be to leave the show. Um, I had met such an amazing person who was who was my dresser originally, Marguerite, who became like such a close friend. And I was leaving not only Marguerite, my costumes, the cast, the crew, the crew were so amazing to me. Let me tell you, my crew, the crew of Wicked, when I was doing that show, they were unbelievable and they took care of us. And I know that as difficult <laughs> as we actors are sometimes, they were very patient with us and they just really took care of us. So I love my crew members um, over at Wicked and um, I do have a little show and tell, you know, because um, I guess they love me so. <laughs> when I left the show, they gave me this very, very special thing here, which is, which is a part of the stage, actually. This was actually, I think, one of the parts that I bowed on every single night at the end of the show. And so every crew member signed it, if you can see this. Every crew member signed it, and I was a ribbon boy in the show, so they put the ribbon on it as well. So this is something very special, and um, I will always treasure. I've had it for, wow, I left that show almost 11 years ago, and I still have this baby right here. It sits right here with me. Um, I also have some other fun things like my ribbon. So this was very special, my ribbon. I loved twirling and tossing this ribbon. You guys can see that. This is one of my ribbons from the show. And um, um, I was very blessed that I was able to bring some of this home with me. And <gasps> I was a monkey in the show. And so I, one of my monkey masks, all the spikes here but yeah this is a treasure as well for opening night I wanted to do something very special for the monkeys in the show <laughs> um, the male monkeys in the show so I remember going to Target and getting us all little monkeys 
and they don't only just look cute, but they make noises like. <laughs> so yeah, I got all of the ensemble men that were monkeys, monkeys for the show. Um, I wanted to to make everyone feel special, and yeah. Um, but I will tell you this: one thing that I forgot to mention in my show, our show was very special because we had Anna Gasteyer from Saturday Night Live. Anna was unbelievable. You know, when you work with a celebrity, you think that they will kind of separate themselves from you. Anna came in there and she just got in there. She got in there, she was one of us. She treated everyone like family. Between shows on matinees, I would go in to her dressing room and sit down with her daughter and and uh, Rondi Reed, who was Madame Morrible at the time, and we would just eat lunch or we would just hang out in her room. But Anna Gasteyer was so amazing. When she left that show, her and Kate Reinders, who were, um, Kate was amazing too, who uh, they were the witches together. When they left the show, it was very tough. It was very tough for me. I was like one of those monkeys at the very end of the show, like sitting up there crying with tears coming down my mask because it was the very last time that we would see these girls in our company, uh, which was a very emotional night for them as well. But Anna Gasteyer and Kate Reinders, they were amazing um, as, as the witches in our show. And they really set the tone for, you know, what our show would be. And when you have great leaders, then it all, it makes for a great experience. I also have pictures from the cast members, our first cast members, and I'm holding all these things so I'll try to show you guys. This is Anna, Miss You Girl, and we have, who else do we have? We have a Heidi, <laughs> Nessa Rose, and we have Telly, who is Bach. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yes, 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 yes. I don't know. But yeah, there's Telly. And who was just in Aladdin on Broadway? And Kate. Glinda, Galinda, Glinda. And Chris Kusick, who was our handsome Fiero. Hi, Chris. Yeah. I remember when I had my vocal cord surgery, that night I came home, I got a call from Chris, and you know, at that point, you know, I just had surgery and he was like, okay, don't talk, but we just called, we just want to know how you're doing. <laughs> I thought it was so cute that Chris called me after my surgery, but was like, oh, don't talk, don't talk. <laughs> so yeah, these were our cast members, our principal cast members, and they were, oops, sorry Chris, I dropped you. They were unbelievable, and again, they set the tone for the show, so anytime you lose or anytime you lose your original cast members, it's kind of tough, but yeah, the show was amazing. I left the show um, after two and a half years, and it was one of the hardest things. My last show, my friend Lewis flew out from California to, to see my last performance and to drive back halfway cross country with me. And it was just, it was one of those moments I came into the theater that day like this, like these big old brown glasses because I had been crying all morning. And I remember not wanting to go in there with like bloodshot eyes and having to do a performance with bloodshot eyes. But I went in there and it was just amazing, the overwhelming, love that you get and you know sometimes you wish you know you get all this love when you leave sometimes you wish you kind of get the love when you're there but no it was so overwhelming uh cards people coming into your dressing room talking to you and i remember i got to one point and i was like no y'all no more car no no more talk I, I can't because i could not hold it together i'm so emotional and Two and a half years is kind of spinning in your head right now. You're thinking about all of the good times, all of the not so great times, and everyone is kind of re reigniting that, that, you know, that feeling, that emotion. And so it was just tough. I remember from going out there, you know, doing my whole monkey bit, I'm just bawling, you know, knowing that this is the very last time that I will come out here in this costume and do this. Um, so it was very, it was very emotional for me. I remember getting through, getting through, crying in shiz. I get to my ribbon feature, my ribbon solo, and in the show I would always toss the ribbon in the air. I would go down to the ground, I would come up and I would toss it in the air and catch it. 
most times. <laughs> so I remember before I went out praying, oh God, please, please, please let me catch my last ribbon. Please don't let me drop. And I remember going out there and um, I get chills thinking about this. Hopefully I won't cry now. But I remember going out there and it was the first time that this had ever happened. Um, I came out with a ribbon. She says, hey, come with me to the Emerald City. Ding, one short day. And I go out there and I remember this loud like scream. And they gave me an applause for my last performance. I didn't know who, I mean, who would have known that this was my last show other than my friend that was out there, right? And um, it was amazing. And I remember crying the whole time doing this and, and praying in my head, I hope I don't drop this ribbon. And I get off, I remember I got off the stage because I, I exit the stage and I get a hat change and I come out with a briefcase with these glasses to give the witches. And I remember going off and when I exit, when I left the stage, the crew, they were just cheering and cheering me on and it was just thrilling. It was amazing to have, to have that, you know, you feel appreciated. And um, they put my hat on, I got my, I got my, um, briefcase and I went out there for the very last time and I opened my briefcase with um, for the for the witches and they they acknowledged me to the audience and it was amazing it was a uh, one of those times that you you know that you are appreciated and they acknowledged me and and uh, It was emotional. It was emotional. Um, I got through it. I mean, really, that last show was really getting through it because I was ready to leave, but I wasn't ready to leave. I wasn't ready to leave all of these memories, all of the fans. Um, so, yeah, I remember finishing and getting off the stage after one short day and really collapsing. And I remember I was crying uncontrollably. I could not contain myself. I was just, I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop crying. I don't know why I was so emotional. I tried to do everything to not think about going, you know, leaving the show. And again, every time I saw someone, I would, I would cry. So I remember having to step away and step outside. There was a little stairwell and stepping out there and just having a moment for myself and just trying to recollect, you know, collect myself because you have a job to do, you have a show to finish, you can't just fall apart. Um, so I went out there and um, I finished I finished my show. And uh, you take off that costume for the very last time, your cast acknowledge you, uh, they acknowledge you, they sing happy trails to you, and they acknowledge that you're leaving uh, to the audience. I think the witches acknowledged that I was leaving and um, it was just, it was, it was amazing. Um, it really was, it was great. Um, and I remember afterwards there was a barbecue <laughs> at one of the dressers house, Diana. Hi, Diana. Diana had a barbecue and uh, that was kind of also too like a slash going away party. And it was fun, it was fun. And I remember leaving those wonderful, beautiful crew members for the last time, um, I think most I think we had mostly crew members at the party, um, the after party, but just leaving the cast, leaving the crew members, it was very tough. Um, and uh, yeah, I started my new journey back in LA and I never forgot about my experiences in Wicked and being a part of such a huge, huge show and being honored that I was in the show. The people that I met my really good friend Marguerite who dressed me now we're still friends today um, shows really do bring you together and even if you have tough times you always find people you find people that that will always that will become your lifelong friends you will find those people Jackie is one of them um, one of my good friends Jackie we were always by each other in that show and um, so you find friends for life and, and so what you see on stage, there's a whole backstory that happens and you only see the part of it. You see only one part of it. And sometimes I don't think it's necessarily the most important part. I think that 
what happens beyond what ha is happening on that stage is so important and what really shapes what you guys see on that stage. Um, and even even when you're not having a good day, when you're having a down day, you know, you're not gonna see it. You shouldn't see it out there as an audience member. I mean, these shows do more than just entertain you. They bring people together, people get married. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing the things that happen behind stage, behind closed doors uh, from the audience. And um, we always say, that's the show. The show really is happening backstage. But I will tell you, when you are in a room, a dark room, I might add, with the same people every single day, well, at least six days a week, it becomes tough. It becomes tough, but you remember what you're there for, and you're there to perform, you're there to be an artist, because this is what you signed up for, right? This is what you took dance classes for, this is what you prepared for, taking singing lessons. You, prefer, you prepare for these opportunities like this, and once you get these opportunities, you treasure them. I will always treasure my experience in Wicked, even though it wasn't always the best experience. I will always love that show. I will always cherish my experiences, and um, yeah, I love it. I love the show, and um, I miss you, damn it. <laughs> I, I think if I had, if I was given the opportunity to go back into the show, I think I would. I think I would go in for the twirl that ribbon one last time. I would, I would, because I miss it. And I miss my costume, so yes, um, I would definitely go back into the show if I had the opportunity to. Um, yeah, 11 years later, right? Uh, so, tell me your musical theater story. If you've been in a show, if you've had experiences like I have had experiences, I'd love to hear about those, okay? I'm gonna ask you to do something very special. I'm gonna ask you to press that subscribe button and hit those bell notifications so that when I upload new videos, you get the notification. Please follow me on Instagram at Delandis. Easy breezy, right? And uh, yeah, follow me on Twitter at Delandis World. Comment below, let me know what you're thinking. I love to know what you're thinking. Um, thank you. If you have not seen Wicked, you are behind. You have to see the show. It's amazing. I love you guys. See you next time.